and four years between when your birthday lands on the exact same day. So it had been since 2010, and thank the Lord, it won't happen again <laughs> until 2027. <laughs> so it's a long time, but I, I really appreciate y'all, and, and uh, thank you for putting that video together. That was, that was really fun, and uh, um, so thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, and uh, it's good to get older, right? Hey, Amen. Hey, <laughs> all, all my... Uh, all, I, I usually say all my heroes are old, so if you get older, you get into hero status. So uh, some of y'all are, are big heroes, and some of y'all are little heroes. Just, <laughs> are you a big hero? All right. Just, it just depends on your age. It just depends on your age, what kind of hero you can be. Amen. Normally, this would be really good at this time to uh, go ahead and uh, give you some announcements, but I guess in... Uh, I had birthday brain or something like that, I don't know, and uh, to celebrate my birthday, I forgot to bring the announcements with me this morning. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, we better talk about that. Next Sunday, I'm just looking to make sure it didn't sneak under anything. Next Sunday is the block party, okay? And so uh, it's from, what, what, four to eight? Four to eight, four hours, all right? And uh, so... If you haven't yet, if you haven't yet, then sign up to bring a side. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer, and uh, the reason you're doing that is so that we can know what kinds of sides are coming, all right? And uh, we're going to have, I don't see the smoker of those briskets this morning, but a gentleman in the church is going to smoke uh, the briskets. We're going to have really good brisket, and uh, we're going to have some... Uh, um, Probably Chad and Scott are going to uh, cook the hot dogs and the hamburgers. And uh, so we're going to have brisket. We're going to have hot dogs. We're going to ham- have hamburgers. You're going to bring good sides. We're going to have drinks. And it's for the whole community. So if you know of anybody that might want to just come and have a free meal and hang out with us and play some games, that's the other thing, too. Bring some games. We have some games I know that are already coming. We have some blow-up slides and some water things for the kids. And so bring swimsuits for the kids. And uh, if you have a yard game or something like that, bring it. If you have a lawn chair, bring it. Because your lawn chair is going to be much more comfortable than our plastic chairs or metal chairs or anything like that, okay? So bring your lawn chair. And if you have an awning, bring your awning, okay? If everybody, if everybody that has an awning brings an awning, and then plus we have the shade of this building, during that part of the afternoon, and we're going to pray some cooler weather in. Can y'all be in agreement with me for a little bit cooler weather? But not rain. We don't need it to rain on that day. But uh, cooler weather, then uh, we'll have a pretty good, uh, I keep calling it a picnic, but we'll have a pretty good party, won't we? Yes. Amen. Praise God. How many of you are going to be there next week? You're going to come to the party. All right. Good, good, good. All right. There's flyers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She said there's flyers out in the foyer, so pick up some flyers before you leave. If you have a place, um, a business, or your work where they'll let you put something on a bulletin board, put it up there. And uh, then we're going to be taking flyers to the apartments across the street. We're going to be taking flyers to some neighborhood uh, neighborhood houses near here. And uh, let's pray for a big turnout. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We can minister to some people. We had a family. We had a big, I guess the last time we had something like this was when we celebrated uh, the church's 25th anniversary of being a church. And uh, when we did that, we gave away, I think, we just gave away free hot dogs that day on a Saturday, but had some fun, invited the community. And uh, we had a family join the church. We had a family come out and and, uh, just talk to us a little bit and join the church and and part of that family, still member, still a member of the church today. So, uh, um, hey, Ben, that's what we're trying to do, introduce ourselves, okay? okay. All right. Are you there? Yes. <laughs> I know. I'm kind of stumbling around, you know, after you watch a good old video of yourself, you don't always, uh, <laughs> you have to recover a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if you ever watch things of yourself, but it doesn't always go well. <laughs> Been, but that, that was really nice, really well put together, praise God. Well, you ready to bring in the tithes and offerings this morning? 
Amen. Praise God. Praise God. That's good. We had a we had a, a good healing service Thursday. If you haven't ever come to the Word Cure Healing Center, you want to come on out, and we'll be there again this week at two o'clock, won't we? All right. This is our two o'clock week, so it'll be two p.m. on Thursday. If you have anything happening in your body, it is God's will to heal all. In fact, that's what we're going through right now. We're on we're we're on reason number. What did we get to? We got the 23. We got to 23, 24. Okay. And uh, so um, at least 24 reasons why it's God's will to heal all. We actually have 30 written down and more as we get more revelation. So come out to that. Get refreshed in your belief system on healing. Glory to God. Because sometimes your body will say something else. Sometimes somebody else will say something else. Mm -hmm. Heaven forbid, sometimes your doctor will say something else. Mm -hmm. But we want to meditate on the word of God because it's yes. health to our flesh. Amen. 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 Praise God. You got your offering ready? Yes, Do you all have that text to give thing again to, to show on the, as a, I don't know what you all call that. Let's welcome everybody from Facebook and uh, the YouTube channel to join us. Can you give them a big hand, round of applause? <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Right now, our website is down. We hope to be getting it up really soon. And uh, uh, we actually found a backup for it, and we're talking to somebody who's going to uh, get us on another server. So that website will be back up. Um, oh, I was stepping out of the way in case you wanted to do that. Sorry. <laughs> you're a good camera person just following me. Uh, that is what we're doing now. If you're used to uh, giving electronically or giving uh, by PayPal or something like that. Since you can't do it on the website, you can text to give 325-231-4790. Give, then put a space, and then the amount, and then you just follow all the prompts and uh, click on the link, and you can do it that way. I just wanted to show uh, the viewers that because, you know, we have our church, we have not a whole lot, but we have a few people who are members of this church that are not able to be with us but uh, they are with us every week by Facebook or they go on later to the YouTube channel and they're with us that way and they actually send their tithes and offerings in usually by way of the website and so they can't do that right now so uh, if you want to if you want to text to give or try that you can do it too but if you're used to doing cash or check or anything like that our envelopes are back in as well and so you can fill out an envelope and you don't have an envelope, an usher can give you an envelope. All right? Everybody good with all that? Yes, sir. Amen. Are you sure you're awake today? Yes, sir. It's a rainy day. Somebody said, man, this is our, this is our rain crowd. But, you know, rain's kind of a phenomenon in San Angelo. And so uh, sometimes, you know, it starts raining and uh, people just hunker down. So this is our rain crowd, so you're going to have to shout for everybody else. All right? Amen. All right. Good, good, good. Well, let's hold your offering up to the Lord. Husbands and wives, hold it together. Glory to God. Are you glad for God's economic system? Oh, yes. It really works, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Let's pray our prayer. Heavenly Father, according to your word, you supply seed to the sower. Thank you for giving me seed to sow. This is my seed. I sow into the kingdom of God. I sow because I love God and want to see Trinity Fellowship Church continue to fulfill what God has called us to do. As I sow, I take part in every life changed, person blessed, and ministered to by this church. According to your word, I give, and it is given back to me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I thank you, Lord, that as I sow my seed, good opportunities are coming my way. Opportunities of savings, investments, overtime, better jobs, raises, bonuses, and promotions are coming my way. The windows of heaven are open because of my obedience to sow my seed. I thank you, Lord, for your favor upon my life and the grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. In Jesus' name, amen.
school in Oklahoma and uh, everybody wants to know how you're doing what's going on in your life so uh, here you go <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. It will come. Praise God. Hallelujah. You, uh, I don't know if you uh, saw, but when that uh, video started, I thought it was my mic. I didn't even see on there that it told me, it actually told me to go sit down. And uh, I completely missed that. I was, I was wondering when they were going to turn something off. And, uh, um, you, you know, and then I saw on the screen they were doing something, so I was still watching it, and Charity said, sit down, sit down. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. I, this is going to uh, be longer than just that little flash. <laughs> okay, so I went and sat down. So anyways, turning your Bible this morning to Romans chapter 10. Hallelujah. Praise God. Aren't you glad to have Noel back this weekend? Amen. It's always good. When people come home, 
Praise God. I'm glad she's learning a lot and doing good. Everybody has an opportunity there, part of the training, I believe. And uh, when you talk to other graduates, it's so, is uh, your faith. And every single person that I've ever talked to that ever went to Bible school at Ramah Bible Training College has um, a uh, obstacle that there is no other way that they'll get over it unless they build their faith. And uh, it, it's different for just about, you know, I mean, some probably is similar, but it's different for all the students. But they all got that obstacle of faith to, so that they can put it into practice. They can build their faith. I remember when Spiros was going to go to third year and used to be now, I think, on the M1 visa, you can work. But back when he was in school, <clears throat> um, you couldn't work on your M1 visa. And so he's a citizen of Greece, not of the U.S. And so he could be here on that M1 visa but could not work, just to go to school. And uh, so he had nothing paid and uh, had enough to live that month. And then he was about to have to go back to Greece. And I remember he was talking to uh, one of the deans that said, uh, you know, I do believe it's God's will for you to go a third year. And, uh, um, and Spiros knew it was. But uh, Spiros said, well, I don't know how I can. I have no money. And uh, the dean said, well, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but on top of the church is this huge uh, faith <laughs> shield that spins around. And he said, oh, yeah, I've noticed. He said, well, without faith, you, you don't need to be here anyways. And so Spiros had to go out of there and get prayed up and ready. Amen. But God supplied. Hallelujah. Well, um, I didn't know what Noel's testimony would be, but this morning I'm going to talk about the increase of your faith. So in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I always say this, that the, the word here says by hearing, not having heard. Because some people will tell you they have faith. And, and to say that you have faith is, is not having the increase that you need. Now, faith is not just an on or off uh, uh, thing. Now, there is a switch of faith, which means you stay in faith, or you switch it off and get out of faith. But faith is, is not just, well, I have faith or I don't have faith. faith. Faith can be measured. The Bible says that God's given every man a measure of faith. Jesus talked about people having no faith. He talked about people having little faith. He talked about people having great faith. All right? So faith is measured. Faith is not, I have the faith or I don't have the faith. There, there is measurements of faith. And it's important that we are able to increase our faith. We did a little series not long ago on growing. If you're growing spiritually, your faith is increasing. It's important that your faith increase. On a Wednesday afternoon, I didn't have a chance to talk to Charity about this. And so I'm not sure of the date. Maybe she knows. But I think it was a Wednesday afternoon in 2013 we had some discouraging news from uh, a surgeon. And that discouraging news with the, was that Charity had a rare nerve disease in her leg. And that night after church, as we talked, I told her this. I made this statement as we sat in our living room. Was it 2013? Is that, is that when it was? 2013? I think so. On a Wednesday, 2013. Well, as we sat in the living room, I looked at her and I said, huh? 2014. Okay, it's 2014. So um, was it was seven years ago. So I, I looked at her on that Wednesday night, and I said, we, I don't believe we have the faith to receive this. I don't, I don't believe we have the faith to get past this. You know, some people uh, are afraid to say those words, you know. But, but you gotta, you got to know where your faith is on things, okay. Some people think, well, you know, I, 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 had, I had enough faith, and, and by faith I received healing, at this point, for this, okay? Well, praise God, if that ever comes back, your, your faith will probably still be high in that arena. But even, even in regards to sickness and disease, you could have a, a buildup, if you will, of being able to receive in one area and not be able to receive in another area. Do you know what I'm talking about? Let me give you an example. Well, and that would be, uh, for me, the common cold or the flu. Those, those used to happen all the time in my life. The flu at least twice a year. And I mean the whole ray of it. 
you know, the, the body aches, the, you know, even your teeth hurt, that kind of deal. And, and then you do the fever, and then you've got the sore throat, you've got everything running, you know. And uh, then you finally top it off with a lingering cough for two to three weeks after it's over. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. And so that used to happen to me at least twice a year. And in 2003, I got fed up with that. And I said, I don't believe I have to have that every year. The last flu shot I had was in 2001, I think. The work, place I was working at was giving those away. And uh, I have a, a general practitioner who keeps trying to give me one. And I keep telling her no, that I don't, I don't uh, if, I'm, if, if that thing can't live in my body, then I can't, uh, I can't subject myself to trace amounts out of your syringe. Now, you, you got to go on your faith. <laughs> you, try to have, you, you try to set your beliefs on what, what somebody else's faith, you're going to get frustrated. You know what I mean? In, in fact, you, can, you can't even have faith on somebody else's revelation. You better get in the Word and get that revelation to be your revelation. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Say, well, God's no restrictor of persons. No, He's not. <laughs> But you better build yourself up like they're built up if you want to receive what they received. You know what I'm saying? And so I said, God, I don't believe it's your will to have that divine health should be mine. Right? Jesus paid the price. It should be mine. I shouldn't put up with that. And so I'm not going to. And, and I was just talking to God about this, but I did make this statement. I'm not going to get the flu anymore. I'm not going to get a cold anymore. It's not going to happen. I'm refusing it. I, w I won't do it. Now, I'm not refusing. It. God didn't give it to me to start with. You understand that. It's not an argument with God I'm having. I'm actually coming into agreement with what he already said. David said, bless the Lord, oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, who healeth all my diseases. Amen. Amen. Well, according to my Bible and your Bible, we're under a better covenant based on better promises. Amen. 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 So if he healed all David's diseases, do you think he healed all yours? Yeah. Absolutely. What, what does that mean, all my diseases, any kind of disease that would attach itself to you, he's already healed. Hey, Ben, so we need to be on the receiving end of that. Some people are waiting on God, and God's waiting on them. <laughs> so anyways, I said that, and I knew I had to build myself up along those lines, and so I read a book called Christ the Healer by F.F. F. Bosworth. Now I'd read it in sections and in parts as, as, as part of a textbook, I think it was in my first year. Did you get to read part of that in your first year? Great book, great book. It's not one of those things you can just sit down and read all the way through. At least I couldn't. I mean, every chapter, every chapter is in depth into the doctrine along the lines of divine healing. Hallelujah. F.F. F. Bosber was a, was a theologian, and his specialty was divine healing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In fact, F.F. F. Bosber, just, just so you know a little bit about some history of it, he's responsible for bringing Smith Wigglesworth to Texas. And so when you read about Smith Wigglesworth going to the Dallas area, that's because of F.F. F. Bosworth's church there in Dallas. So anyways, I started reading that book on F.F. F. Bosworth a little bit at a time, just in-depth on divine healing. Hallelujah. And, and what was I doing? Well, the book is full of Scripture. Scripture. So I'm building my faith. I'm increasing my faith. I'm increasing my faith. I'm increasing my faith. Well, then some of you know this story. I had every symptom just come attack me one night. I mean, if it seemed like I had the fever. It seemed like, it, you know, nose was running. It seemed like we were going to go through it just like we always went through it. And I said, no, no. No, I'm not getting the flu anymore. I'm not getting the flu anymore. He said, were you praying? No. No, I was speaking. I was speaking. Children of God are to speak, you know. Why do you think the world tries to steal your voice? Because God wants you to speak. You're children of His. He spoke things into existence and expects you to do the same. So I spoke. I spoke. You know, in Mark chapter 11, Jesus said, have the faith of God. One translation said, have faith in God. One translation said, have the faith of God. And so then he went on to say that you could have faith to speak. When you speak to this mountain, tell it be removed and cast in the sea, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe those things that you've said will come to pass, it shall happen, right? That's faith to say. You know, the other verse is faith to pray, but that's faith to say. And so I was saying, by my faith, built up on the word of God on the inside, I was saying, I'm no longer having the flu I'm no longer taking it I'm not going to take it anymore and so I said that I'm not having it I'm not having it I'm not having it I'll not get the flu anymore I, I've spent most of my life getting that twice a year and I'm done with that finito so I had some choices to make 
Because, you know, you're going to get some choices to make to where you can keep your faith going the direction it's supposed to go, or you can start hindering your own faith. Start talking yourself out of it. Now, how many of you know whenever your symptom, symptoms like that come on your body, you don't feel like doing much? You ever had that stuff? I won't ask to see a show of hands, but I, but I can tell you from standing right here and knowing all of you that 90% of you have had the COVID. Have had the COVID virus. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Don't raise your hand. But, I, but I, I believe I had it. I believe COVID attacked me. And I tell you, there's one thing for sure about that little booger. <laughs> Fatigue is part of the program. <laughs> I mean getting tired if you just stand up and go to the kitchen. Just stand up and go to the kitchen. You feel like you ran 10 miles. Oh. Well, when you feel bad, you don't feel like doing anything. You know, you just don't feel like doing anything. Used to, you remember when the, uh, we, we'll call it a pandemic if you want, whatever, the China virus. You remember when that first started that everybody was on Facebook and everybody was saying, does anybody know anybody that's ever had it? You remember that? Everybody's like trying to figure out. And now everybody's like, does anybody know anybody that's never had it? Because several of us, you know, we got the T-shirt, don't we? And, af and after you, by the grace of God, get through it, you want to buy the T-shirt, don't you? You're like, I survived. <laughs> hey, man. Say, well, you're making light of it. Well, I got a big God. The blood of Jesus is powerful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, man. David Ingalls used to sing a song that said, I never heard of the heavenly flu. Have you? <laughs> Oh, man. I never, I never heard of the Chinese heavenly flu, have you? No, no, we don't have to have that, glory to God. So anyways, I said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not getting the flu anymore. Not getting the flu, the flu virus, influenza. Not going to get it anymore, it's not going to happen. I had some choices to make. Number one, am I going to go to school the next day? Now, this is at night, this is getting late. I'm sitting in a bathtub because it's the only place I feel good. Only place I'm warm is in a hot bath. And it's, and it's Oklahoma in the wintertime, so it's cold everywhere else. And Charity and I, we used to save on heat. You know, when we were Bible students, we saved where we could. And so our little apartment had a fireplace, so we put the fireplace on, and we had an electric blanket on our bed. So we would turn the heat off and get under the electric blanket. Amen. I became a bath person in Oklahoma without heat. And so here I was in a hot bath in Oklahoma in the wintertime. And I said this, I, I got to go to school. I got to go to school. Because I'm not, I'm not taking this virus anymore. So I have to go to school. Because, because people that are free from this virus, they get up and go to school. Well, what about the work the next day? Am I going to go to work the next day? Yeah, I got to. I got to. I can't call in. I can't call in. If I call in, then I'm saying I have it. If I call in, it's getting to me. It's not going to get to me. It's not going to come on my body. I have it. I have healing. I don't have the virus. It can't live in me. It can't attach itself to me. You know, the next day I woke up feeling good. Feeling absolutely good. So from, from at that time in 2003 to present, I don't get influenza anymore. I mean, I don't. Uh, I'll tell you how funny it is. Uh, uh, my uh, uh, general practitioner getting my yearly exam and what have you. And, and she offered me, the, and now she's got some other vaccines she's offered me, but that, she really pushes the flu one in, in flu season. But she's got several others, too. I mean, she's a shot-giving woman, let me tell you. You want a shot, she will give you a shot. Amen. And so uh, I, she, I think she's a bartender instead of a practitioner. I was trying to give people a shot. But so anyways, I was there, and I said, no, I, I don't need it. I don't get the flu. And she said, let me open the doors for you. Don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. And so she opened every door because she didn't want me to touch anything. I guess some of her patients were um, putting little uh, viruses on the doorknobs. I don't know. But uh, um, she handled all that for me, glory to God. But I said that to say this, when that leg situation hit us, I knew my faith was not built up in that. I see, this is a, this is a stumbling block for some Christians, and so you need, you need to pay attention. Because as it was, influenza had, had no chance, had no chance, had no chance. Well, some would say, well, that's healing too, it is. But this leg thing, I said, we don't have enough faith. We don't have enough faith. We don't have enough faith. So you, you can be at different levels of faith to receive even different healings from God. Amen. So what did we do? We started building our faith. We started increasing our faith. Increasing our faith. 
Some people get so frustrated in prayer because they don't go to the Word first. They're trying to pray for something that they don't have faith to receive. You know what I mean? Well, you know, a sinner has to first of all realize and come to the acknowledgement that they need a Savior. They can't get saved without knowing they need a Savior, right? They have to come to the knowledge that Jesus is their Savior. They have to come to the knowledge, Jesus died for my sins. And once they come to that knowledge, then their faith is built up. Yes, I need a Savior. Yes, I'm on my way to hell. I don't want to go there. Jesus paid the price so I don't have to. I'll accept what he did for me. Right? And then what happens? They can be saved. Romans 10, 9, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall be what? Saved. Saved. Exactly. Well, see, the frustration of that is sometimes we start praying something because someone else prayed for it and got it. And so we start praying along the same lines of them, but our faith is not where theirs is in that instance. And so that's what I want to talk about, increasing your faith. Increasing your faith. Now, if you know the rest of that testimony, you know our faith was increased. How did you increase it? Through the Word of God. Number one and foremost, through the Word of God. I have, let me see if it's in this Bible too. I believe it is. No, it's in my black one, the one I use for the word cure. I have, in a couple of Bibles now, through the book of Matthew, the first time it's mentioned, where Jesus healed them all. And a multitude came and he healed them all. And right by there, I'll write in small letters where the next chapter and verse to find that same statement is. When he's in another region, they brought all the sick and the lame, Right? And it says, and he healed them all. And he healed them all. And so uh, I went through my Bible and read every portion. And he healed them all. And he healed them all. And he healed them all. I was building our faith. I was increasing our faith. Then I went through and I started reading uh, of individual cases of Jesus healing people. And you know when you read the individual cases of Jesus healing people, most of them, Jesus will mention their faith. Now, there's some that are a total act of God. But for the most part, he'll mention their faith. You know, the lady with the issue of blood, Jesus said, daughter, your faith. Say your faith. Your faith has made you whole. That would mess up a lot of people's theology right there. But the master said it, right? I mean, you look that up. It's in red letters. If you have a red letter edition, it's in red letters. Daughter, your faith. Your f- he didn't say my power has made you whole. You know, his power was present to heal the whole time. But that lady tapped into it. Is that true or false? That lady tapped into it. He said, daughter, your faith. Well, you know, if her faith could make her whole, your faith could make you whole. Ooh. It's important to increase your faith. But you need to increase your faith on other things. Right now, I'm believing God and standing on the Word of God in a particular arena that has nothing to do with sickness or disease. But it's a promise of God, and I keep building my faith on it. I'm learning to receive along those lines. Something I'm standing on. In fact, there's a particular sermon where I first got the revelation out of the Word of God in that particular subject through multiple scriptures, and I'm wearing that sermon out. I mean, I keep playing that sermon. Playing that sermon. Playing that sermon. I, I, I uh, tend to my mom that lives in Ballinger and some of her affairs. And, and so when, if I'm going to or from Ballinger by myself when she's not in the car, and, and that's 35 miles, well, I'll play it. I'll listen to it. I'll listen to it. If I'm doing some menial task, I'll put it on. I'll put it on. Some people say, well, I already heard that. I already heard that one. I already heard that. But faith doesn't come from having heard. Faith comes by hearing. That's present participle. That means in the middle of it. That means it's going on right now. It's a consistency. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. I've said this before, and you can testify to it if you've heard me say it, but I've said this before. If I'm overseas and I ate something wrong or ate too much of something and, and, and something starts disturbing me physically in the intestinal arena, I'll, pay, I'll play on YouTube Brother Keith Moore's healing messages. I'll play them all night. I'll go to sleep listening to them because a spirit man doesn't sleep. So I'll let him get on the inside. I'll play them all night long. All night. What are you doing? You, I'm increasing my faith. 
there's, an, there's, there's a faith, Smith Wigglesworth said it like this, there is a faith that won't be denied. See, it's the promise of God. It's not your promise, it's his promise. But he's faithful. But there's a faith that will receive it no matter what the obstacle is. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people put the blame over on God. Well, God just must not want me to have it. Or, 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 there's something on your end blocking it. Come on. Come on. Well, I know I have faith. Well, sure, sure. Every man has a measure. Sure. But could you increase it? Amen. So we did that. We started going through the Word of God. And then we started going through a devotional on healing. Health food devotional is what it's called. We started reading it like a novel. We weren't reading a daily devotional. We were going through the whole thing. And what was it? It was a testimony on healing. It was a scripture on healing. It was a scripture on healing. It was a testimony about healing. Increasing our faith, increasing our faith, increasing our faith, increasing our faith. And it has a confession as well. It has a confession about the scripture that's on healing. We, we did it every day. Sometimes three times or more a day. Just reading it over and over and over, over and over. You know, you have to turn off the TV to get into some things. If you don't learn to turn off the TV, there'll be some things you can't receive. So, well, I, well, I always have it on a religious station. If you don't turn off the TV, there'll be some things you can't receive. Amen. I'm not saying there's not some good, wholesome things to watch, but I'm telling you something here. You should grab a hold of it. If you can't turn off the TV, there's some things you won't receive. I had a professor who said this one time. He said, some of you students, it was in Bible school, he said, some of you students, you should turn down the radio in your car and listen to God once in a while. Well, I, you know, I had to grab hold of that because not only was my, my, my radio up, even though I was listening to Christian music, you know, I was jamming, it was loud. <laughs> What's he saying? I needed some quiet time. You know what I mean? I needed some quiet time. Praise God. So we did receive and the paralysis left her body and she can move her toes and move her foot today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In fact, the surgeon was amazed at it. We went to the surgeon and, and he just kept looking and looking. And, and, and he named that long, long disease with lots of consonants and lots of words. And he said, I was sure it was that last week. I was sure it was that. He said, what do you attribute to the change? What do you attribute to making this change? And Charity said, the word and prayer. And he said, well, okay. <laughs> you know, he left her folder on his desk over a year. Said he left it open there. It was a case study that he wanted to continue to study. You know, he changed the way he did surgery because of the disease that she had incurred after the surgery. It was, it was due to a nerve block that he had put in her leg. He stopped doing the nerve block on that surgery. He never did that nerve block again. But the healing power of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, your faith needs to be established. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. So what does that mean, established? Well, established is, is created in the first place. If you're going to establish something, in, in particular, if you're going to establish your faith on something, that's revelation into something. That's understanding for the first time, hey, I, I, this is for me. You, you know, on Wednesday night, we're talking about who you are in Christ. Well, if you haven't heard some of that before, then that's an establishment of who you really are. Your faith is established. I'm in Christ now. When the Bible says in whom, it's talking about me in Christ. When the Bible says in Christ, it's talking about me in Christ. It's being established, you understand. Your faith needs to be established and needs to be established on the Word of God, not on what somebody said. If I say something that's not in the Word, don't establish your faith on that. I encourage people not to establish their faith on someone else's experience. Sometimes that can be a frequent thing. Thank God for your experience. Thank God for what He's done for you. But don't, don't build your faith. Don't try to build somebody else's faith on what you experience unless you can point to the Word of God. And the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. That means you don't take one thing out of context that just happened to happen to you. And say, well, it must happen to everybody. No, no, no. It doesn't necessarily have happened to everybody. You know, in Acts chapter 2, when the Spirit was first poured out on all flesh, and they were in the upper room in one accord. You remember the story, don't you? On the day of Pentecost, right? 
and, and uh, the, the Spirit came as of a rushing mighty wind? Well, when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, there was no mighty rushing wind. Well, you know, there was lots of other people after then that were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and there was no wind. It was a windless, windless prayer. But they still got baptized in the Holy Spirit, didn't they? You know, the, the, there appeared tongues of fire, right, that sat upon each of them. Didn't it? You've read Acts chapter 2, haven't you? Okay, all right. You might need to check it out later if you haven't. But you know, later on in the Scripture, people got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and no fire appeared. Nobody saw the fire, but they were still just as baptized in the Holy Spirit, weren't they? The Bible even says, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, just like those on the day of Pentecost. Well, thank goodness, I don't know, somebody may have started, tried to start a, a first church of the fire. I don't know. But, you know, thank goodness, nobody's like, well, I guess you didn't get it because I didn't see tongues of fire land on top of your head. No, they had enough sense to know, no, we got it, we got it. Just because that experience happened in that one particular time doesn't mean that that will keep happening, does it? No, but it was all evidenced by the speaking in other tongues. That kept happening. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say you can't build doctrine on one experience. You can't try to build faith on one experience in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let everything be established. Amen. People sometimes look to the experience instead of looking to God. Sometimes people never receive their healing because they only want to receive it in one way, one direction. No, it has to come this way. It, happens, it has to happen like that. Well, you know, you have the greater one on the inside of you. Didn't Jesus say he'd guide you into all truth? Amen. So you can trust the Holy Ghost. Amen. You don't have to be afraid of medical procedures if the Holy Spirit he, he has, a, has a peace and a knowing on the inside to go through that medical procedure. Go ahead. If on the inside there's a stop and you shouldn't go, then don't. Amen. Don't you think God could use medical science, modern science? Oh, yeah, he has. He has. Glory to God. God just wants you well. You understand that? God just wants you well. That's what he wants. He wants you well. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2. And Paul's talking here, and he says, And sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith. So you, you can be established in faith, and you can be encouraged in faith. And so if you're already established in faith, your faith can be encouraged. But if you're not established in faith, then there'd be no good trying to encourage your faith. In that particular arena. You know what I'm saying. So this morning you might be sitting there. You might say well I've heard this before. I've heard this before. Well then I'm not establishing your faith in it. I'm a encouraging your faith in it. Can you see that? In increasing your faith. Your faith can be established. And your faith can be encouraged. Glory to God. Now how many of you know. Raise your hand if you do. That Jesus died for your sins. Raise your hand if you know Jesus died for you. Okay, put them down. How many of you know that Jesus rose from the dead? Amen. Now, you can be encouraged in that even though you already know it, don't you? Can't you? Absolutely. Someone starts preaching along those lines. You don't shut it down. No, you're like, amen, praise God. What are you doing? I'm being encouraged in my faith that Jesus was my substitute. I'm being encouraged in my faith that Christ died for me. I'm being encouraged in my faith that he rose again. I'm being encouraged in my faith that he rose me up when he rose up. That's encouraging, isn't it? So you can establish your faith, but you can also encourage your faith. And we see that right there in Scripture. Now look at Mark 6. Mark 6. Gospel of Mark, chapter 6. Because the increase, the increase of your faith, we're talking about the increase in our faith, the increase of your faith will increase what God is able to do. The increase of your faith will increase what God is able to do. increase of your faith will increase what God's able to do. So, well, you know, God can just do anything. Can he lie? Hmm. 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 So there's some limitations. 
In fact, that's usually an excuse to blame God when someone just goes around flippantly saying God can do whatever he wants to do. He can't lie. Can't lie. Can't lie. What he's set up is in that motion. When he gives authority, that one has authority. Didn't it say in our word that Satan's a god of this world? Putting blinders on people. Now we know, we know, we know, we know that that tenant's going to run out, don't we? We know the lease is going to run out on that. He won't always be the god of this world. But Adam gave it over to him, didn't he? Adam committed high treason, gave it over to Satan. That's how come Satan was able to tempt Jesus with it. Satan told Jesus, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give you all these kingdoms. Well, wouldn't have Jesus seen? It would not have been a temptation if he couldn't have done it. Who was it, either Mussolini or Stalin? That was reported that, that, that made a deal with the devil. Prayed to Satan and said, if you'll give me control, if you'll give me a kingdom, I'll serve you. Well, he got some kind of kingdom, didn't he? I don't know which one of them it was. Mark chapter 6, verse 1. You're going to find out some limitations that Jesus had. Hey, if the master had some limitations, there's going to be some limitations that you're going to have to deal with. Mark chapter 6, verse 1, it says, And he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him? With such mighty works are performed by his hands. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, uh, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet's not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no. How would we say that today? He couldn't do. He could do no mighty work there. You know, it doesn't say he wouldn't do. Uh, can you see it? If you can't see it in your Bible, see it right up here. He could do no mighty work there. He could do no mighty work there. It doesn't say he didn't want to. It doesn't say he wouldn't. It says he couldn't. Couldn't. Jesus, the Son of God, could not, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't. I, I, I didn't say it. It's right here. It's in your Bible. He couldn't. Except he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Verse 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Unbelief. What is unbelief? Unbelief is a lack of faith. He marveled because of their unbelief. He marveled because of, their, because of their unbelief, because of their lack of faith, he could not do mighty works. Man, that messes with a lot of people's theology. Because a lot of people think it's all on God and God just does whatever he wants and whatever he pleases and da-da-da-da-da. Man, his will will eventually come to pass. But there's a lot that goes on today that's outside the parameters of his will. He did something in the very beginning which made man different from any other creation since or to come. Man has free will. Man can choose. That's why even though Jesus died on the cross for the sins of mankind, even now so man has to choose, is he going to be my Lord and Savior or not? Jesus died for the sins of the world, but the world is not just going to go to heaven because he died for them. They have to accept it. They have to believe in their heart and confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus to be saved. Amen. Man has free meal. He couldn't do any mighty works. He couldn't do any. One translation said it like this. He healed a few minor ailments. A few minor ailments. He couldn't do any mighty work. He couldn't do any mighty work. He wanted to. Oh, he wanted to. 
Oh, there's so many things God wants to do in the lives of believers. There's so many things God wants to do in this world. You know, John Wesley said it like this. He says, it seems, you know who John Wesley is, founder of the Methodist Church. He said, it seems that God is limited on earth by prayer. Limited by prayer. Wow. There's so many things he wants to do. So many things he wants to do. He couldn't do any mighty work. Now look at it again. Put that verse up again. Look at it again. Verse 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And then it says what he did. How did he change their unbelief? Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. He marveled because of their unbelief, because of their unbelief, because of their lack of faith. He couldn't do any mighty work. How many people have gotten mad at God when they didn't get an answer to their prayer? Well, I prayed for healing and my body's just the same. I prayed that this person would be healed and their body's just the same. Well, I was praying for money for school and the money for school didn't come in. This didn't happen. That didn't happen. You're an unbelief. You're an unbelief. You're an unbelief. You're in unbelief. He can't do a mighty work in unbelief. But this was the change. This was what would help. He went about the villages in a circuit teaching. What do you think he's teaching? Faith comes by hearing and hearing. 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 Comes by hearing, and hearing. He's going around giving them something to hear. He's going around building their faith, increasing their faith, giving the word, giving the word, giving the word, giving the word, giving the word. You know what? You can't OD on the word of God. <laughs> but you can build your faith, and you can increase your faith, and you can increase your faith, and you can increase your faith. And it comes time where you have to put action to it. And the Lord will lead you in that action. Because James said, faith without works is dead. Amen. You know, you can take that in any arena. Faith without works is dead. So if you're not walking in the light of the word of God, that you know, that is the word of God that's been revealed to you, and you're not walking in that, you're not being a doer of the word, then your faith is dead. Some people think that they can do what they're not supposed to do and have the same kind of faith. You can't. It'll chip away at your faith. Because faith without works is dead. And you're having dead works. Dead works is doing what you know the word of God said not to do. And you're doing it. That's dead works. That's dead works. God's quickened on the inside of you something to do or something not to do. And you're not walking in that. That's dead works. You're deteriorating your own faith. You're decreasing your own faith. Because if you don't have faith in the word of God to do the word of God, how are you going to have faith in the word of God to receive what God said you could have? You're a double-minded man, unstable in all your ways. Amen. That's why it's so critical that you walk in the light that you have and increase and increase and increase. Hallelujah. Stand with me. You got to increase. You got to increase. You know, it says, don't stop listening just because you're standing. It says in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus told them told these people, Luke chapter 4 is the same instance, he told these people that God had anointed him to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed. He told them, God sent me to do this. He spoke the word, yet they didn't receive the word. Their faith wasn't increased and he could do no mighty work. Instead, they, look at, they looked at him not spiritually, but fleshly. They didn't look at him as being a conduit from God himself. They looked at him as being the kid from Nazareth. That's why Paul said we're not going to look at anybody else after the flesh. Hallelujah. Paul could receive from people. He was determined, I'm not going to look at him after the flesh. They were offended at him. Who do you think? We saw you when you were a snot-nosed little brat. You know, 
know it doesn't say it like that. I'm not trying to, to, to say anything rude about the master. But, you know, he had to grow up just like everybody else. Somebody had to wipe his nose for a while. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't born with the divine ability to wipe his own nose. Amen. The Bible said he grew. He grew in knowledge. He grew in knowledge. He came as a man. Had to learn everything that a man would learn. Came as a man. Amen. And so they just looked at him after that. Who do you think you are? God sent you to heal us. God sent you to teach us. Now, if I wanted somebody to build me a table and chairs, sure, I'd call you. God didn't send you to heal me. God didn't send you to heal us. They wouldn't receive from it. They shut it down. And so although he was anointed to do that, they couldn't have it. Then look at the lady we spoke of earlier with the issue of blood. She said, if I only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. If I just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be made whole. And sure enough, she touched it. She was made whole with it. The Bible says that Jesus felt virtue or power come out of him when she touched it. He said, who touched me? Who touched me? His power or virtue came out of him. She drew it out. It was not his intention to pray for her. It was not his intention to anoint her. She drew it out by her faith. And he said, daughter, your faith, your faith has made you whole. Say this with me. I want to increase my faith. I want to believe God for what God wants me to have. I want to increase my faith. Well, I'll tell you how it comes through the word of God. Hearing and hearing. Hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Maybe we'll finish that up next week. Are you ready? Man, we're going to increase our faith. We're, we're going to receive from God. I, I, I want to say it. We're going to receive from God this year. You know, for me, for anybody, you got kids or you got grandkids or you're connected somehow with the school system, you got somebody in school or in college or anything like that. September's always feels like the start of a year, doesn't it? Yeah. It always feels like, well, that's the start. That's the, the year is starting. Well, it's really September, but it feels like that a whole year is starting, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, we're going to receive big in this next year. I mean starting in September. We're going to receive big. Why? Well, God meant it for us all the time. God didn't just now say, well, now I want you to have it. Now you've done enough good works. No. That ain't it, right? We didn't we didn't receive from God because of how good we were. Well, I'd still be waiting in the line. You know? I saw the old Soviet Union bread lines. I'd be way in the back if I was, you know, going to get in line according to how good I've been. I've been a lousy person. Lousy. Until the blood of Jesus cleaned me up. So it's not about that. But we're going to receive because we're increasing our faith. It's not our faith in ourselves. It's our faith in God. Well, isn't God in us? Aren't we in Him? Woo! Sometimes it's hard to tell us apart. You know what I mean? He's in us and we're in Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're not saved today, if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, would you do it? Would you do it? It's so easy. It's not a hard thing. It's an easy thing. To ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says if you believe in your heart then what do I believe? Well I believe he came I believe he was the son of God I believe he put on humanity I believe he humbled himself and came as a servant, he came as a man so that he could be my substitute the spotless lamb he was my substitute he went to the cross he gave me his clean spotless record and he took my ugly sketchy record he died for me he rose from the dead I believe that Jesus is my Lord Jesus is my Savior do you know it's just that easy it's just that easy if you're watching Facebook live on the YouTube channel it's that easy it's that easy you pray that you mean it with all your heart the Bible says when you confess him you will be saved. For all that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's just that easy. 
You say, well, what about if I was saved and then I, I, I've been slipping back into old man. I've been, I've, been, I've been like a prodigal son. I just went off and squandered everything. Uh, like the father of the prodigal son, so our heavenly father is. He wants you back. He wants you back. He wants you back. He wants you back. Come home. Come home. Come home. Say, God, forgive me. Forgive me, God. I knew I shouldn't have been doing those things. Forgive me. I know I wasn't living for you. Forgive me. here today are saved and you're glad you're saved hallelujah glory to God you know what the Bible says about the promises of God the Bible says that they're yes and so be it yes and so be it if you're wondering man I wonder if I could have that yes so be it that's what God says because his promises are yes and so be it hallelujah so leave here with your faith encouraged with your faith lifted up amen the devil can't take it from you if God gave it to you, you just hold on to it. Praise God. All right. As you go today, love on each other. Bless one another. Don't forget to sign up to bring a side next week. I need your help. We're going to get some people, and we're going to love on them with the love of the Lord. Amen. Oh, and we have cake, apparently. We have cake. Take your cake and eat it, too. Praise God. You're dismissed.